there are places that I used to go, whether it was like bars or, you know, even like LGBTQ centers, you just are losing that, that intimacy and that connection you get when you get to be with one another. And I think that's a big refuge no matter what's going on, but especially during a pandemic, it's hard. Queer spaces in New York City are very special, like holy places. To see those lost or kind of shut down uh, was really disheartening. And like, it, it, you know, it affects you emotionally to see those gone. Across the world, the lack of queer nightlife spaces has led to a lack of safety for so many people. And in countries that are um, targeting queer people, finding these you know, queer spaces or even finding secretive queer spaces that are community bars that aren't necessarily associated as a queer space, but people in the community know that. The fact that those spaces have closed and they've been confined to their homes and they're under lockdown, I think really has forced many queer people back into the closet. Throughout this last year that we've gone apart from each other, it became even more evident how important physical queer spaces are and how important they are for our well-being, for our socialization, for our empowerment, for not only physical well-being, but also mental well-being, like mental health for queer people. Being around like-minded people is something that is very empowering. And I often think about like majority groups, for example, cis white men in government, for example, they're very empowered. They're in majority most of the time. So to feel that for a queer person, I think is very empowering as well. It's important that we as queer people, we need to be able to socialize with each other. That's why we had bars, that's why we had cruising places. That's how, that's why we had whatever places we had to get together because we need to know that each other exists and we need to know each other as community. Every time I go on Instagram or talk to a friend, I hear about a new business or a new place that's closed down. One of the things around COVID that you may not be aware of is that for many refugees across the country, when they are resettled into asylum centers, they oftentimes find that their way of finding queer community for queer refugees specifically is going out to the community, going to nightclubs, going to bars, finding those queer spaces, finding safe spaces where they find their community. Because of the pandemic, obviously so much of nightlife has been shut down. So for us in the United States, I think thinking of nightlife at being shut down is of course, it's a community a, a community association. You meet friends, you meet people, you have these safe spaces, but it's also a, storm, a source of entertainment. Um, for many queer refugees across the country, it's actually a source of you know finding safety. It's a source of finding their community. It's a source of supporting themselves and getting themselves out of a very deep depression. And I also have found new, you know, community events popping up through places like Prospect Park. So it's kind of shifted where we gather and how we gather. Um, but I think I am really happy that the gathering is happening again, and especially going into the summer and going into Pride Month, really focusing on the community itself. Across the country, you know, obviously queer spaces are threatened because the, the queer nightlife in general is based around a bar tab. So many spaces are based around that. The entertainment, the performance, many queer spaces don't have restaurants attached or they were really at risk because of the pandemic. I think the other thing to really point out is that lesbian nightlife spaces specifically, even more so than the overall umbrella of queer spaces, I think there's only 17 lesbian bars left in the country. And the Lesbian Bar Project is doing some really incredible research about how to support these bars and how to support these lesbian spaces because within the queer nightlife umbrella, there are also these factions that are continue to be um, lost just based on the circumstances and based on what's happening in the world. Nightlife is something that is often seen as this extraneous expense. And I think it's something that we really need to invest in uh, for the future of our city. Thinking about collective trauma and what collective healing looks like, I'm confident that we can take a lot of that trauma out on the dance floor, but I think it has to be done with an extra grain of kindness and compassion and understanding for all of our different experiences as well.